Microsoft's 13.5 inch Surface Laptop 3 hasn't changed much since last year, but the few things that did change were definitely for the better. Before I get into those updates like the brand new Intel 10th Gen Ice Lake processor, as well as the downsides of the Surface Laptop 3, let's talk about what I really like about this laptop. We've got the $1300 model in black, which now comes with a metal finish all the way around, compared to last year's black Surface 2, which came with a dark grey soft touch Alcantara finish on the palm rest. So now you get black metal literally everywhere, and it's probably the cleanest laptop design I've ever seen. From the bottom of the laptop which lacks extra vents, stickers or visible screws, to the top which has a very simple and minimalistic Microsoft logo, and of course, the display and palm rest, which lack logos and that annoying Intel sticker that comes on a lot of Windows laptops. I've honestly gotta say that this is one of the most minimalistic laptops I've ever seen, and I absolutely love that about it. The switch from Alcantara to metal on the palm rest actually makes a huge difference in how premium this laptop feels, and in my opinion, definitely worth the $300 upgrade, since you also get double the storage. The only thing I don't like about the black finish is that dust and oily fingerprints are much more visible, but thanks to the metal finish, it's very easy to clean, whereas the Alcantara finish was pretty easy to stain and quite hard to get clean. The overall build quality and solidness of the Surface 3 laptop was rivaled only by Dell's most recent XPS 2-in-1 that we recently reviewed. Be sure to check that out at the end of this video if you haven't already. Just like the Surface 2, we get a really good display for the price, with more than enough resolution, an awesome 3x2 aspect ratio that's great for browsing the web, very decent 97% sRGB color accuracy, and touchscreen support. The display's peak brightness also reaches 400 nits, which is actually really good, but my biggest gripe is that the display is quite reflective, so you almost feel like you have to use it at maximum brightness in a well-lit room. Now one of my favorite things about this laptop is Windows Hello Facial Recognition, which instantly logs you in as soon as you open it. It just doesn't get any more convenient than that. And the keyboard is basically as traditional as it gets, and while it's very easy to accurately type on, it just doesn't feel as great as some other laptops, like the Pixelbook Go and XPS 13 2-in-1. It feels like it's lacking a bit of spring after you press down, but it's still decent overall. On the plus side, I actually really like the Surface Laptop 3's quiet and responsive trackpad, quite a bit better than the pretty loud and clicky trackpad of the XPS. So I'd rate it as one of the best Windows trackpads, especially for its larger than usual size. Another thing that really impressed me was the speaker quality. Now if you're trying to find the speaker grills on the Surface Laptop 3, you won't find them, because the speakers are actually beneath the keyboard, and to our surprise, they actually sound great. They're not only louder and have better sound quality than the ones on the new XPS 13 2-in-1, but they're actually a bit louder than a comparable 2019 13-inch MacBook Pro. <laughs> I'd honestly have to say that these are the best speakers we've heard on a 13-inch Windows laptop, and more than good enough for streaming shows and movies, so kudos to Microsoft for that. Now with all that being said, let's get into the big changes we're seeing this year. I'll get into the new processor in a second, but I want to first mention the changes in ports. We're still getting a full-size USB-A port for those legacy connections, which is always nice to have, along with the standard headphone jack and the MagSafe-style charging port that will instantly disconnect if someone trips over the cable, which gives you some extra peace of mind. The main change this year is the switch from a mini display port, which is honestly pretty useless to me, to a much more usable USB-C port, especially now that it's starting to become more common. The biggest downside I see here is that the USB-C port doesn't support Thunderbolt 3, and even the highest end model doesn't support it either, so that means you can't connect an eGPU or get a high bandwidth connection to an external monitor or external docks. Now if you don't know what Thunderbolt 3 is, forget about it. You'll love this laptop, but if you do, and it actually matters to you, you might want to look elsewhere. Now let's talk about the biggest change we're getting this year, and that's the switch from Intel's 8th gen processors to the brand new 10th gen Ice Lake CPUs. There are quite a few benefits with this. First off, we get better connection specs, like Bluetooth 5 and integrated Wi-Fi 6, along with even faster LP DDR4X RAM. Ice Lake is also using the brand new 10 nanometer architecture, so it's going to be more efficient, using less power and staying cooler compared to before, 
But along with that, we're actually seeing a seriously great jump in performance. We're seeing almost twice the single core score compared to the Surface Laptop 2, and an almost 70% faster multi-core score. It really just doesn't get much better than this, especially since you still get this chip at the base $1,000 price. And to our surprise, it even outperformed the base $1,300 13-inch MacBook Pro. So the Surface Laptop 3 is definitely not a slouch in the performance department. This year, it also gets Intel's improved Iris Plus graphics compared to the standard UHD Graphics 620 that we got last year, giving us a really impressive OpenCL score as well. All in all, there are just two things I would really want Microsoft to change for next year. The addition of Thunderbolt 3 and a display that's either a bit brighter or less reflective, and maybe just a little bit more color accurate to get it up to 100% sRGB. Other than that, I'm really happy with the Surface Laptop 3 overall. The one thing that may keep you from buying it is the price. At a base price of $1,000 and $1,300 for the premium all-metal finish, it's quite a bit more expensive than other Windows laptops. But its saving grace is the premium build quality, clean design, decent display, excellent speakers, awesome trackpad, and of course, the incredible performance. This laptop will basically cover all the bases, doing things that people do on a daily basis extremely well. And it's also capable of doing some of the more heavy tasks like photo and video editing every now and then, albeit not as well as some of the other laptops with dedicated graphics cards. I'd recommend the 13.5 inch Surface Laptop 3 to anyone who wants to spend up to $1,300 on a premium Windows laptop. You won't really get much more value by upgrading to get more storage or RAM, since it's still lacking Thunderbolt 3, but the base model is actually a pretty great deal for what you get. If you want to see us compare the Surface Laptop 3 to the 13-inch base MacBook Pro, you can check that video out right over there. And if you enjoyed this review, click that circle above to subscribe for more videos like this one. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.